In this video, I'm going to show you how you can generate avatars in your Adobe Captivate project. I'm Paul Wilson, and I make videos about e-learning specifically with the authoring tool Adobe Captivate. If you're enjoying what I'm doing here today, by all means, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and share this video with all of your e-learning colleagues. Today, I'm gonna to take you through the new feature of Adobe Captivate 13 that takes advantage of the latest in AI generative technology, specifically with AI avatars. It's really cool and a very remarkable feature and certainly can add a lot of engagement and make your e-learning courses a little bit more dynamic than they are today. Let's take a look. Okay, so let's go ahead and add a generated AI avatar to this project. And there's a couple of ways that you can do that. First of all, you can easily select generative AI and select generate avatar. Alternatively, you can go into your project properties and there you'll find the ability to enable an avatar on all slides. So let's go ahead and do that and select that option. You could customize your avatar at this point, but we're gonna go ahead and just use the avatar that's here. So if I select this avatar and go to Visual Properties, I'll be able to set up, again, some of those customized appearances. I'm going to use a round appearance so that the avatar isn't just floating like a square decapitated box. Instead, I'm going to choose a solid fill. I'm going to use the advanced color picker icon so that I can use the eyedropper tool and select a color from the slide already. So the, this green here, I think, is a good choice. And that takes care of that. I don't really want a border. Don't really want an inner shadow, but we can go ahead and generate the avatar for this slide here. Now, there's always two triggers for avatars. On this slide, it really makes sense just to use the slide enter because we want the avatar to automatically speak the narration for this particular slide. So I'm gonna click on slide enter and I'm going to add the text that I want to be read out loud for this particular slide. In this case here, there's really not much need for it, but if I felt it was necessary, I could add a pause to this narration, and clicking that will create this syntax for pausing the slide. And you can edit that to be an appropriate amount of time, whatever it is that's applicable for you. So I'm just fixing this up a little bit here. Once I'm happy with the narration, I'm gonna click on Next, and there's my transcript for this particular slide. Um, in this case here, I can go ahead and press Generate, and even though it's going to take some time for this generation to occur, I can move on to my next slide and start working on the Generate Avatar for that slide. So let's go here. I'm gonna make the same adjustments here. Again, I'll use that color picker icon, and we'll just grab that from the first slide there. That looks good. I've purposely put a spot for my avatar to exist, so I'm just gonna put her in the upper right-hand corner here. And we're gonna go ahead and add our transcripts for this slide. So generate avatar. Now, we're going to take care of the slide entrance. So when we arrive on the slide, we want to hear some narration, and I can just populate that in. Again, if I needed to, I could add a pause. But I don't need to. I think in this case, I'm just going to click on Next. But I can add additional transcripts for this slide to account for the click to reveal that this slide has as well. So we've got long working hours, technology, and stress as some of the reasons for work-life imbalance. So we can add a new transcript. Notice that slide enter is grayed out because we've already done that. 
but we can go ahead and press click tap. And when students click on the image, we're going to have the avatar read the following sentences here. So we'll type, paste that in, press next, and there's transcript number two for this slide here. We'll also do the same thing for the second click to reveal. So I'll click on plus add new transcript, click tap, and we will use image five in this case here. I'll paste in the narration for that. Press next. And we have one more transcript to add. We'll click on add new transcript, click tap, and the image for our stress example here. And I'll just copy that text and paste it in here. Let's add a period at the end of stress so it just makes that a unique sentence. Press next. And now we're good to generate this content. And you'll see, you know, the progress indicators on this slide here. If I return to slide number one, we can see if this one is finished yet. And if we click on view narration, we can see that it's completed. I can do some fine tuning, like placing the avatar, maybe enlarging the avatar. That looks pretty good there. Don't want it too large where it's going to impede on the text on screen. And we'll do something similar up here. We'll take a look at our avatar here and maybe just try our best to align it. Remember, of course, this is responsive design. So where I place it here will only generally be where the avatar appears, especially when you're looking at tablet and mobile view here. Let's take a look at the narration and see how it's doing. 39%, 59%, 70, 83. So again, you can continue to do other things in your project until this is finished. Okay, so it looks like all of my avatar videos have been generated. One of the things that you can do on this slide here is of course we can preview this and see how it sounds. Reasons for work-life imbalance. It's important to note that the factors of work-life imbalance can vary from person to person and depend on the specific circumstances. Select each image to learn more. So that looks good and sounds good as well. And if you want to provide feedback because Adobe, just like everyone, wants to continually improve, we can let them know that this avatar generation was good, successful output. So we can give it a thumbs up and we can put in any comments that we wish. And we can say, you know, hey, this was aesthetically pleasing, the transcript accurately interpreted, and, you know, other. And, of course, then I can say the voice matched the video really well or something like that. And go ahead and press submit. And that way, Adobe gets that feedback and then can continually improve this product so that you have some fantastic avatar generation. The other thing you might want to do is back out of the actual text itself and go in and customize closed captions. Because one of the advantages of the generative AI is that it will generate your closed captions for you. You can click on customize. And from here, we can select the appropriate font that we wish to use for this particular slide and maybe even for the entire project. So I've changed the, the font to Lato and maybe what we'll do is we'll select a solid color for the background. Again, I'll use that darker green. Ooh, that's not good. Let's change the text color to maybe black over top of that. That looks good. And if you're happy with that, you can apply that to all your slide narrators. So that way the closed captioning will match from slide to slide and from interaction to interaction. Let's go back up to slide one and do a quick preview of this and see how it works. Work-life balance. This course focuses on the strategies and techniques that can achieve sustainable work-life balance. Select start to begin the course. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and press start. Reasons for work-life imbalance. It's important to note that the factors of work-life imbalance can vary from person to person and depend on the specific circumstances. Select each image to learn more.
Okay, we'll select the first one. Long working hours. Many jobs demand long hours. This can make it difficult to find time for other activities and responsibilities. All right, the second one. Technology. The constant connectivity with technology has made it difficult to disconnect from work. And the third one. Stress. High stress levels at work sometimes make relaxing and enjoying personal time difficult. That's pretty cool. I think that this is a great addition to Adobe Captivate. I do want to emphasize that, you know, if your stakeholders are asking for more interactivity, this is not necessarily improving or increasing the interactivity of an e-learning course. It, it might be improving engagement or the dynamic quality that an e-learning course has. But don't let someone try to convince you that this is a form of interactivity. Interactivity is the clicking to reveals, and those should be done in, of course, a meaningful way. But I'm certain that most of your students are going to really appreciate this AI avatar technology and your stakeholders as well. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, Hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.